Good morning, everybody. I had the very bizarre experience yesterday. My one of my channels entirely disappeared off of YouTube. Not I deleted two, but I didn't delete this one, and uh, it was gone. No such channel exists, says YouTube. I thought. Did I have a real senior moment? I forget that I deleted it, or did I? I mean, you can't do it by accident. There's too many steps. Or, or to hide the content, you can't do it. You know, they'll kind of ask you, are you sure? You know, and, and you can't just do it accidentally. It takes going through their maze of the back room to try to figure out how to do anything on YouTube. Well, it was gone. I mean, for hours and hours, and I thought, oh. we were talking about, do I upload? I, had to, I tried to restore the channel, and it says, mm-mm. It's, it says, oh, what, it created a new one with the same name, but didn't create any, didn't take, put all the stuff in there, the banner, the avatar, and all that. It was just a long saga, and I said, either, <laughs> either, this is a major, major YouTube glitch, or they quietly remove my channel, which they have been known to do without any warning and any notification, nothing, none of their processes. But, um, and I started, and I started thinking, well, people would say, well, maybe you should make lemons out of lemonade. If you don't want to, re you know, do you want to put it back, at, re upload every video, go through all the in details about every video, uh, and put all that back in? Would you take a good solid day? Or do you want to just let it go? And I decided to let it go. <laughs> and, I, and then later that night, I went back to check, and the one I had restored, the one that just had the title, and that was it, you know, not any special font, no banners, no nothing. It was there, but so was the other one. I went, what the heck? It was a, it was the worst YouTube glitch I've ever seen. So anyway, that was very stressful yesterday. I had actually decided that instead of making, uh, you know, taking lemons and making lemonade, I just considered already lemonade and a pretty picture and be done with it. But it's there. So I had to decide then, what do I do with it then? Because uh, I was kind of on the fence about it. And I went ahead and I hid the content. So if you see one of the channels that you subscribe to with the content hidden, that's why. Um, but anyway, it was just a thing. It was a YouTube thing. And sometimes those things, and, and my husband said, maybe you should contact YouTube. I said, you don't know what you're asking. <laughs> getting them to do anything, content, finding who to talk to, and getting an answer about anything is just like pulling teeth, so forget it. Um, I just let it go. Well, it's still there. I may eventually delete it. But, <laughs> that said, that wasn't the subject of this video. It didn't intend to be. This is the, uh, this is the shawl scarf, triangle scarf, shawl scarf that I made. Um, just put, I mean, I made it longer. Instead of 42 inches, I made it 50 across the top edge, this, this top edge. Um, and that means I can wrap it if I want to, like a shawl. I could turn around frontwards with a tassel in the front and, and put it, tuck it under my coat like a, a cowl. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it turned out really pretty. Um, I think it would it would work better as a cowl turned to the front if the yarn was not a bulky yarn. Um, that would mean it'd be finer, easier to it's it's more it has more drape when the yarn is fine. So, um, but this is this is how it turned out. I mean, I think it turned out really nice. So anyway, um, yeah, it's I like this yarn, <laughs> discontinued yarn, of course. I heard that yarn's going up. As if it's not already too expensive. Uh, it's already gone up before, but anyway. Uh, I've got enough yarn in my little drawers to last me for a while. A lot of projects I can do without buying any more. Um, so I'll be busy. Uh, but I wanted to talk about something, and I think I'm going to have to... <laughs> let me see if I can tilt this down. Mm. Okay, is this gonna work? <laughs> okay, well, I don't know. I think I wanna put a bit closer in. Okay, all right, now, now, nothing like not being prepared, right? Um, but anyway, I wanna talk about something. Um, you know, this, this channel has a lot to do with frugality, living within your means and even below your means to save money and to have money for things when they pop up that you don't expect, which happens in everybody's life and you can't get away from it. As they say, life happens. That's not the saying, but I say life happens. I don't want to be vulgar necessarily, <laughs> um, but it does happen. Um, so anyway, I don't like this. I think I want to do it a little closer. I feel like I'm 
feel like I'm so far away. And I've cut my head off, but that's okay. I can lean back now. Um, frugality. So many people are saying, I can't pay my bills. I can't pay my bills. I got two bat camera batteries in my pocket, just in case. Um, <laughs> I wish my adapter would get here. It should be here today or maybe tomorrow. Um, so I put my power pack on and I have to worry about it for an hour or, le or more. Um, I'm not going to do an hour long video. So. Uh, I have never done any that long, I don't believe. I don't think. Maybe the elderberry syrup one? I don't think that was that long. Um, but people complain about they can't pay their bills. They never have enough money to pay their bills. They're always behind the eight ball. Um, and yet, if you really examine how they're spending their money, you realize they have plenty of money. Um, and they're spending it on the wrong thing. <sighs> you live within your means or below your means, and you can. It takes a little bit of thought and work. Um, I would recommend the Tightwad Gazette. It's an older book, um, but it has a, a, lot, a lot of ideas you might not want to use, but there's a lot of ideas you might not have thought of to save money. Um, written by a lady who was in, in the military, her husband was in the military. I b believe, it's been a long time since I read it, but it's a good reference book. How, how to save money on just about everything. Um, I, I think it's still available somewhere. T the Tightwad Gazette by Amy Deci her name is pronounced decision, but it's got a Z-Y-N on the end, so I can't tell you the rest of how, how to spell it. I can't remember, uh, but it's pronounced decision. Um, let's just take one thing, for example. Now, I did, a while back, I did a, um, a video about the cost of smoking and how much money you are actually spending. If you don't open your eyes and look at what you're doing. Look at the ugly truth. If you don't look at it, you'll never fix the problem. If you, okay, I'll, here's, here's, a, here's what a lot of people do. Every day, they stop at a convenience store on the way home and they grab themselves a Coke, a drink of some sort. It could be an energy drink or whatever. Let's just say those are average like $2 a piece, okay? And they do it every single day. And you know you can't get by without spending $2 on those things, at least $2. Depends on what you're buying. Let's just say, let's use $2 for a bottle of Coke even, or one in with ice in the, in the, you know, the big gulps or whatever. I don't know how much those even cost. I haven't had one of those in many, 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 many years. Um, it costs you $2 a day. 30 days. So you got 60 bucks in that one drink a day, in every month. Multiply that times 12. Multiply that times 12, 12 months. You do it every day, on the way home from wherever you're going, or if you're out and you get something, just one drink, just one $2 drink. You spend over $700 a year on a drink. It's not like buying a two liter bottle for $2 that you keep at home, and you use your mug, you use your insulated uh, tumbler, and you put ice in it, and you put that in there. That's a lot more cost effective. It's two whole liters of drink, if you do it at all. I don't recommend it, drinking that much, but a carbonated drinks, high in phosphorus and all the other nasties. Um, but think about how much you're spending on that one drink. Now, <laughs> let's escalate up to Starbucks here. And I know a lot of people are daily Starbucks people. I can't imagine, first of all, wanting to drink those burnt wood, wood chips, but I had one, I think in the 90s when I was a realtor. I had one Starbucks. I never had another one. Of course, in the 90s, it didn't cost you six bucks for one. I don't know how much it is, five, six dollars. Just take the five dollar mark. If you, if you have a five dollar cup of coffee, latte, whatever those things are, um, five times 30, it's $150 a month, right? Times 12. That's a lot of money you're spending on one cup of brewed coffee because someone else brewed it. 
I don't know it's if you're gonna to have to have coffee every day to go to work on your way to work or anyway why don't you just buy the machine if you don't have a machine get the machine get the coffee I guarantee you you'll spend a lot less if you take your own travel mug of your own coffee or if you make your latte at home at night with your Nespresso or whatever you know that equipment costs a little bit but that's one-time investment is and it'll last a while so the same people will say they can't they have to borrow money they have to borrow money they can't pay their bills they, they they can't pay their car insurance they can't buy their pay their homeowners insurance or their property taxes seven hundred dollars is a good chunk of property taxes is it not just to avoid one drink Cooking at home is, people have forgotten how to cook. And of course, there's not a lot of cooking. If you're on carnivore, there ain't a lot of cooking to it. You got a crock pot, you got the oven, you got the grill. I mean, you can buy fancier grills, you know, flat grills and all kinds of stuff that you want to cook outside with if you want to do that. You can do that. Yeah, we don't have that. We have a you know, regular gas grill outside that's falling apart. Um, but there's not a lot of cooking that goes with carnivore eating or even ketovore eating as long as you're not eating the keto snacks and trying to make recipes. I don't make the recipes. It encourages bad behavior. Um, but people have forgotten how to cook at home. The bet the, when we were eating vegetables a, a good bit, you know what we did? We got a bag of frozen vegetable mix like it might have some snow peas or broccoli cauliflower maybe some carrots um you know it's one of the mixes they have different things in them and uh, sometimes it'll be sold as a stir fry mix we take the cookie sheet and we maybe put a little bacon grease on it from when we fried bacon for flavor and we take all the vegetables and we lay them out on the sheet and we drizzle olive oil on them, and then we would use one of the seasoned, the seasonings, the seasoning mixes. I'm looking up there because somebody's has rolled down the street real slow, and it's like they're gonna turn up here. And I don't know who that is. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I think he, I ain't turned around. Anyway, I just don't know because my, unfortunately my gate is open at the moment, and I usually have it closed. But I'm expecting a delivery. Um, and we take it and we roast those vegetables on 425 degrees for about 20 minutes. They're excellent. If you want to get some ranch dressing or something, some low sugar ranch, ranch dressing and dip them in there, you could do that, obviously. Or just eat them because they're very flavorful that way. Very cheap. Now, I used to get a bag of stir-fried vegetables. I have, there was an asparagus mix I especially liked when I was keto. And, uh... We used to pay 99 cents for the bag, good size bag, plenty of stuff, plenty for both of us for one meal. And I think that same bag is like 225 now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to the goofball in charge. Uh, but we're not talking about that. Um, but, you know, just, just the reality of the more expensive stuff right now. It's just a reality. How it happened? It is what it is. It's the reality of it. You can rail against it all day long. You can gripe about it. You can cry about it. But you have to deal with it. You have to buy the same stuff, right? If you want to eat the same stuff, you got to buy the same stuff. Um, I would uh, advise not buying all the processed snacks. I happen to know that, like, there's a, a pork rinds. You can eat pork rinds, okay? I prefer the one with a little barbecue flavoring. I know there's maybe a modicum of sugar in that flavoring. Um, but I prefer the barbecue flavor. However, you can buy pork rinds, but you got to make sure that they're fried in lard and not vegetable oil, not some kind of seed oil. Uh, Max pork rinds are fried in lard. However, Max pork rinds have MSG. I, um, I'm sure you can get other brands. We're just very limited in what we can get around here. This is a very this is a very rural area, and we don't have the choice of 15 grocery stores, you know. So uh, we're very limited. Um, and I think Ingalls doesn't even carry but one little bag of pork rinds. It's like three dollars for a tiny little bag. I thought well, you've got some nerve. Uh-uh. But um, people have forgotten how to cook at home. They eat out. 
one meal out, you don't even know what you're eating anymore. That's the problem. Um, you think you're going to stop by and get a chicken sandwich. Like me and Rachel were talking about in our carnivore video. You get a chicken sandwich, you think, I just won't have the bun. And you're eating the chicken, and you don't realize that there's only the chicken and that chicken is only about 50%. The rest of it is all kinds of bizarre fillers. Um, if you read labels, that will keep you honest. If you read labels, you will be horrified by some of the things you see. For instance, years ago when I was, I used to eat Lucky Charms. I mean, Lucky Charms cereal, right? If I want a sweet hit, I'll get, get Lucky Charms, right? Until I read the box, and it had trisodium phosphate in it. I think I'm saying that right. TSP. That stuff is a cleaner you use on brick walls. And I got onto their the company's the brand's Facebook page when I was back when I was on Facebook years ago. And I said, "Why is your why are you putting a brick cleaner, a brick cleaner in your cereal?" And I grabbed it. I said, "No, it's trisodium phosphate." I said, "That's a poison. Why are you putting that in your cereal?" Their answer, their lame answer was, "Well, it's a salt." I said, "Well, gosh, why don't you use like maybe salt, sodium?" Sodium chloride, just salt. How about salt? So, you are not only, when you stop and get these things, you're not only hurting your health, you're hurting your wallet badly. And then you complain that you don't have enough for this or that or this or that. One meal, one meal out will cost you maybe a fourth of that cost or less for almost the same thing if you cook it at home. Oh, but, you know, people, I know, people sport eat. They eat for entertainment. They eat to eat their emotions. They eat to de-stress. It doesn't de-stress, I can guarantee you. Feeling bad is a stress in itself, and if you keep eating that to de-stress, you're going to cause yourself stress. Um, but don't, just remember, to don't put your head in the sand. Look at what you're buying and how often multiply the numbers if you can't do it get a calculator okay yeah online calculators i pop mine up all the time so i don't make a mistake right because i don't make mistakes you know some days you're not thinking right and it's like a, what a, what is so and so times so and so i forget um here comes that truck again back down here it's weird very slow. what is this person doing you stop now okay i may have to go in a minute i don't know what this person's doing I can see the road down there, way down there. The other road you have to turn off up to come here through the trees now, since there's leaves are off the trees for the most part. But frugality, when you stop and you get something, you get sugar, you get a, a drink of any kind that you don't do at home, you don't make at home, uh, you're wasting a lot of money and you're also wasting your health. You can, eating, Eating this eating carnivore or ketovore is much simpler. For the ease of this whole your it simplifies your whole life, is what I'm trying to say. It also simplifies your wallet. I can't afford to eat carnivore. I can't afford to buy all that meat. Yeah, you can. If you take all that stuff you're spending money on, otherwise, all that other junk food and the processed crap, if you don't buy that and you just buy meat, I can guarantee you, you probably would save money you'd probably save money in the end. It sounds expensive. Don't you think it sounds expensive when I bought a half a cow? It, yeah, it sounded expensive. It's, it's, it's a big chunk of cash at one time. You know, when you're talking $1,700 for, for meat, and that's all it is, is meat, um, but then when you divide it up per pound, how many pounds you got, and it comes out to, even with the processing fee, under five dollars a pound, including ribeyes, roasts, all kinds of steaks. It's so it's extremely cost effective, and you don't have to. Every time you go out for food, even if you're just buying groceries, every time you go out, if you don't buy a month's worth at a time, if you go out, you're wasting gas, you're wasting time, and I almost guarantee you, you'll go to that store and you you'll go for some meat. Not gonna get some ground beef. You go for the meat, and you'll come out with. I don't know, $100 more stuff. You're wasting money, you're wasting time, you're wasting your health. 
when you buy the junk, especially. So take a hard look at what you're doing. Get your calculator, get a piece of paper, write down, say, well, okay, I spend, this is how much I spent. Maybe every time you spent, you were going to spend it. Now here's how we used to save money all the time when we were a young military family. <sighs> that $2, now stay away from the debit cards. Use cash. Stay away from debit cards because those things get so many people in trouble. You can't see how much is in your account, how much it goes down every time you do a debit card hit. You don't see that as far as I know. I don't have a debit card. <laughs> I have an ATM card. So I have to actually go get cash out of an ATM. That's all I can do with it. I had it on purpose arranged it that way with my bank. No debit cards. I can't steal from you either if you <laughs> pretty much. Um, don't buy online with a debit card. Always buy with a credit card. You can at least dispute that better. I don't know. But um, that said, if you were going to spend $2 today on this big gulp, however much it is, take that cash. Make sure it's cash. If you don't have cash, don't you dare whip out that debit card to buy a Coke at a convenience store. Don't do it. Take the cash that you would have spent on that. Don't spend it on that. Get you a jar or an envelope and stick that in that envelope. Every time you don't buy something you usually buy, stick that money in an envelope or a jar and put it somewhere where it's not in your visibility. This is where you can't see it. Like stick it on inside a shelf and close the door, okay? And every time you get that out, stick more in it. And don't count it. Don't count it for a while. Do you know my husband bought me an incubator, an egg incubator? My very first egg incubator, he didn't buy he didn't buy his lunch out. This is when he were in the military. He didn't buy his lunch out. And I didn't know he was doing this. He was doing this for a while. And all of a sudden, he pulls out this wad of cash. And he, goes, he says, oh, here, you want to buy your incubator? I said, what? He said, yeah. He said, there's $170 in here. Just by not eating out. So he bought me a birthday present by not eating. Now that's love. <laughs> um, but yeah, so be real with yourself. Don't, don't avert your eyes when you spend money. Don't avert your eyes when you see the balance in your bank. Don't use your debit card. Make it where you have to use the cash. When the cash is gone, it is gone. That's what we did. And when we were young, we'd put these, we'd, we'd divide our, we'd get our cash, we'd cash our paycheck. Back then they didn't have direct deposit at the beginning. We'd cash our paycheck. And then we would take the money and we would divide it into envelopes, you know, electric, water, uh, food, entertainment, all these things. We would have put it in its own envelope. We decided beforehand what had to be in each envelope on our monthly budget. And we put that in the envelopes. And that's what we would do. If we ran out of entertainment money, that was the end of the uh, entertainment, pay entertainment off, off, off base anyway. That was the end of that entertainment. You know crochet. Yes, it costs you. You buy a little hook, you buy some yarn. Um, it's not expensive right now. Not if you just go with the basic stuff. You don't need to buy alpaca yarn. It's, it's expensive. It's super soft. I love it. However, natural fibers cost more acrylic. There's some beautifully soft acrylic yarns. That shawl I just made is 75% is, uh, um, acrylic. It is 10% wool, but I'm not allergic to wool. It's 10% wool and 15% nylon. Um, and it wasn't expensive because it was on clearance. Um, but if you bought, you know, half alpaca or merino wool yarn, you're going to pay a pretty penny. It'd be cheaper to buy the, the sweater you want to make. But in any case, um, you've got to be real with yourself and you can't avert your eyes when you see your bank account. You can't say, well, I'm not even going to think about it. I'm just going to go, I want this drink. I'm just going to go spend it. Or I want this peanut butter bar or whatever you're buying. I want this. I just, it, I need it. I've got to de-stress. But then when your body doesn't feel good, that causes you more stress. So I'm going to have to quit talking. This has been too long. It's over 24 minutes and I got to stop. Uh, and actually my battery didn't go bad. How about that? It must be, that must be the good battery. I better mark that one. Um, but, uh, y'all, you know, frugality is going to serve you well. And when you don't spend all that money and you stick it in an envelope or a jar and after a month you go, wow, look at this. I've got like $150. Don't go blow it on something then. Keep going because 
you're going to have expenses. You're going to have car repair. You're going to have car insurance. You're going to have homeowner's insurance. You're going to have all kinds of expenses that are going to come up. They come up every year. You know that, right? <laughs> um, and then you'll have the money to pay it, or at least offset the cost of it. I mean, what if you save $800 in the year by doing that? That's a good, that's a good chunk of the property taxes or your car insurance or whatever that you have to pay. Um, it's far more than mine, but... You know, see, see, that's just a basic way to save money without it being too painful. But you have to be real and you have to be, you have to look at it. You have to look at the ugly truth or you'll never get ahead. That's all I have to say. Have a good upcoming weekend, all. Bye.